Thank you for joining us on Journey to 600. Today we're going to be going over a portion of non-systems. First off, we're going to be talking about tubes, where they go, and what it does exactly. First off, we have the NG tube, which goes through the nose, and it's more for short-term liquid feeding. You can also do medicine administration and removing gases from the stomach. Next, we have G-tubes, which is when it is inserted through the abdomen into the stomach. And this is for more long-term feeding for people who have difficulty with swallowing. Next, we have J-tube, which is inserted through the jejunum, And this is also for long-term feeding. And lastly, we have the IV, which we most commonly know, and which is what I have a picture of towards the left. And it is inserted through a vein. This helps infuse liquids and administer medicines. Next, we're going to be going over different types of oxygen therapy and what it covers exactly and what it can deliver. So the first one is the nasal canlia, which is probably the most common. You see it in the hospital and probably seen someone in a nursing home or even somebody out in public with one of these, but it is a tube that extends into your nose. They do it over their ears and it will go down into a tank and it could deliver up to six LPMs. Next, we have the oral nasal mask. This covers the mouth and the nose and it delivers oxygen, administers medicines, anything like that. If you've worked in the hospital, respiratory therapy will use these kind of masks for breathing treatments. Next, we have the tent. It is a canopy that goes over the head and shoulders or even the entire body. This helps deliver more OT, O2 at an increased level. Next, we have the tracheostomy mask, which is placed over when somebody has a trach. They'll place a breather over that trach, um, and it is secured with an elastic strap around the patient's neck. And then there is mechanical ventilation. There's pressured cycles and volume cycles. Please feel free to Google pictures of these if you haven't heard of some of these before or you haven't seen them. And please feel free to take a screenshot of this chart or make your own. Next, we have urinary catheters and other types of tubes. First off, we have an external catheter which is a condom cap for a male and a pyrwick for a female. And it is applied over the genitalia and held in place by a strap or adhesive tape. Next, we have a Foley, aka an internal catheter. This is a indwelling catheter with a balloon attachment on the end. So when they insert it, they will balloon up the end of it. So it, when it gets pulled or if something happens, it doesn't come out. And that is why when you have a patient with a Foley that we are very careful with it because it is very painful for the patient if it gets tugged on, pulled on too hard because of that balloon attachment. Also, we want to keep it below their genitalia because it kind of works with gravity to get the urine out. Next, we have the suprapubic catheter. And this is an indwelling catheter as well, but it is surgically inserted directly into the patient's bladder. Next, we have chest tube. This is very common with your patients in the ICU that have had a traumatic incident or a cabbage or in your cardiac floors. The biggest thing for PT is making sure we keep it upright and below the hip of the patient. If this is dislodged, stop activity and notify nursing immediately. Sit patient upright if possible. Lastly, we have the Jackson Pratt drain, aka a JP drain. This is a small tube inserted into the surgical site and connected to a bulb or I've seen them, seen them in the hospital. They're kind of like a round thing. Kind of looks like what you wrap an extension cord around. So they, they could look different. It's not always a bulb suction. But this helps drain fluid from that surgical site. The biggest thing for PT is inspecting the drain, seeing how full it is, and securing it to the patient before movement because we want to make sure that it is not getting pulled on or tugged on or hanging with gravity 
and making sure it is attached either with the clip that they have attached to it or um, with a brace. Next, we're going to be going over different type of monitoring devices. So this chart is very big and I'm not going to be going over all of it. I'm just going to be going over devices and PT precautions, but please feel free to pause, read it, take a screenshot, make your own chart, write it down. Do as you will. I'm just going over those two columns. So first we have an A line, an art line, PT precautions. If you pull it out, Apply direct pressure to limit blood loss and call assistance. I have known people that have pulled it out and there's a lot of blood. So you want to try and limit that as much as possible. You want to try not to pull it out altogether because your nurse is going to be very upset with you. Um, and you want to talk to your nurse beforehand because they might have mobility restrictions. Next, we have the pulmonary artery catheter. They're going to be on initial bed rest and they mobilize when appropriate. So there might be an order in the chart about when they could mobilize or the nurse might know something. The biggest thing is talking to your nurse beforehand. You also want to avoid excessive movement of the head, neck, and upper extremities. And if dislodged, this can be life-threatening because this goes into the pulmonary artery, which is like your heart. Next, I have the central venous pressure catheter. I don't know any PT precautions, but there might be some depending on your nurse, your hospital, your patient. So ask your nurse beforehand. I'm going to sound like a broken record because you need to ask your nurse every time in acute care before you go and see them. Next, we have the um, PIC line. You might not want to use crutches with this patient because it will be in their arm, kind of up at the top of their arm. Encourage range of motion of this involved extremity because it's going to be painful. They're not going to want to move it, but we want to keep your shoulders moving. And avoid blood pressure cuff on this arm because it's right there on the arm. You, They don't want that squeezed. Next, we have a peripheral IV. If dislodged, apply pressure and inform RN, and you might want to avoid blood pressure cuff readings on that arm, depending on the placement. Next, we have the intracranial pressure monitor. Talk to your nurse beforehand, first off, so you know what vitals you want to stay within, what's up, let them know you're going in. We want to keep the head of bed elevated to 30 degrees. We want to keep their neck in a neutral position. Just speak to your nurse beforehand. And then a pulse ox. You don't have to speak to your nurse beforehand. This is probably the only one. But I just want to let y'all know that nail polish can affect readings. Next, we have precautions such as contact, droplet, and airborne. So with contact, you're going to wear gloves and gown. Droplet you're going to wear mask, gloves, and gown. And airborne, you're going to wear an N95 mask, gloves, and gown. I think it's really important to point out the last column, kind of knowing what sicknesses and diseases go with what types of precautions, which leads you to know which kind of PPE you need to wear into the room. We have finally made it to the practice question portion of our lesson. Please take your time. All right, I'm back. Please pause if you need more time. All right, the correct answer is A. This comes from my monitoring devices chart. And if we all recall, I didn't go over everything that was in that chart. I only went over the devices and lines and the PT precautions, but it's still very important to know where they go and what they do. 
So Hickman, aka central line, aka central venous pressure catheter, is inserted into the superior vena cava and right atrium through the neck, chest, or groin, depending on the vein that they choose. And it evaluates the right ventricular function, right atrial filling pressure, circulating blood volume, and long-term administration of substance. Now that we know A is our correct answer, I want to spend some time going over the other three answer choices. B was Swan Gans, aka pulmonary artery catheter. It is a soft flexible catheter that goes through a vein into the pulmonary artery. It continuously measures the pulmonary artery pressure and evaluates left ventricular function. C is pick line and it is inserted into the superior vena cava and the right atrium through the arm. This is how it differs from the Hickman is because pick line is going through the arm while the Hickman is going through the neck, chest, or groin. The pick line provides long-term administration of fluids, nutrition, chemo, and other drugs. Blood samples can be obtained from this and it can be used for blood transfusions. And D is an A line, which is inserted into an artery and it measures blood pressure, and blood can be taken from this for BGS. All right, we're on to question two. Please take your time. Okay, I'm back. Please pause if you need more time. Okay, the correct answer is C. Let's take time and read this question and go through each answer choice. You are walking a patient on cardiac rehab floor. They have a chest tube, JP train, and Foley catheter from their recent surgery and hospital stay. As a PT, how do you need to handle these tubes? A, secure the JP drain to patient and keep Foley catheter above hips. Well, the first half is correct. We wanna secure the JP drain, but we wanna keep the Foley below the hips because gravity is what helps that urine flow out of the bladder into that Foley bag. So A is incorrect. B, chest tube above the hips and Foley catheter below the hips. Well, we wanna keep the chest tube below the hips and we wanna keep the Foley catheter below the hips. So only half of this question is correct. And C, chest tube and Foley catheter below the hips. That is the correct answer. We want them both below the hips. When I have a patient with these tubes, I will hook the Foley catheter to the rolling walker and carry the chest tube so I can make sure it stays below the hips. D, JP drain hanging from surgical site and chest tube below hips. Once again, only half of this question is correct. We do not want the JP drain hanging from the surgical site. We wanna make sure it's secured to the patient. All right, we are on to our third and final question.
All right, I'm back. If you need more time, please pause the video. Okay, the correct answer is D. Let's read the question and take time to go over each answer choice. While in the hospital, a patient was recently found to have rubella. What type of precaution is this and what PPE do you need to wear? So this question is a two-parter. You need to get both parts of the question correct. So let's go through each one. A, droplet, gloves and gown. Well, even if you don't know what rubella is or anything, these two do not go together because with droplet, you also need the mask. Gloves and gown are just contact precaution. B is airborne, N95 mask, gloves and gown. Those two are correct for each other, but if you don't know ru what rubella is, you might not know what precaution it is. So we'll keep that one in our pocket. Okay. C, airborne, mask, glove, gown, incorrect. With airborne, we need an N95. D is droplet, mask, gown, and glove. Those line up, those are correct. So if you don't know what precaution goes with rubella, you could automatically narrow it down to B and D, just right off the bat like that. And then you have a 50-50 chance if you don't know what precaution rubella is. You could refer back to my precaution chart where I have in the last col column all the diseases and illnesses and what precaution they go with. The correct answer is D, droplet. Rubella falls under the droplet precaution. Thank you so much for joining us on Journey to 600. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you know when we upload another lesson and practice questions.